Hello, everybody. Welcome to the next edition of Annex Cloud Market Movers. I'm Erin Reese, and I'm here today with Rick Monvilla, Vice President, Global Strategy at MAP. Welcome, Rick. Hey, Erin. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited you're here. Uh, yeah. To get us started, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself, MAP, and your role? Sure, yeah. So to, to start about myself, you know, working in a, in a strategy team, it, it kind of ended up being because I had so much experience, you know, going through the ranks, you know, I've, I've been at MAP for over 10 years now. And I enjoyed every single moment of it because I get to work with marketers. Like I, I find marketing space just so fascinating. I'm sure, I'm sure you find it the same way because there's just so many opportunities uh, to improve. And, and as a kid, I always liked taking things apart and breaking it and putting it back together and think marketing is the perfect thing about it. And that's what, and that's kind of what, what, what appealed me to MAP. And this is why, why I stayed with MAP for such a long time. You know, we probably about a couple of years ago, we reached a point where, you know, we were kind of a market leading market automation platform. And like many platforms, you have a decision, you know, do we add more channels? You know, do you go to paid media? Uh, all these types of things. And then we thought, well, what is this thing that's going to kind of uh, add this continuous incremental value to marketers? And after we thought about it, we realized that actually it's providing these insights on tap for marketers because the analytics and insights still seems to be such a uh, difficult topic in many cases for many organizations. And this is why we've acquired Germany's leading analytics platform and now we go to market with inside-led customer experience proposition, where basically marketers are able to uh, extract insights, uh, share those insights across different teams, across their agencies, uh, and then activate those insights immediately across whether it's uh, paid media, CRM, email marketing, across all those different channels. So yeah, very mm -hmm. exciting. I, I love it too. I, I tend to be a bit of a data geek. So love to love to talk about the analytics. And I, I love that you said um, insights led as well. We recently did a webinar with Forrester and they were talking about data driven versus data led. Mm -hmm. And data led is, is really the key. It's understanding the data before you move versus data driven. You're moving in the way you think the data should be going if I said that right, but yeah, it's, it's <laughs> certainly the, 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 according to them and I agree, it's, it's definitely the smarter way to go. So great to hear that you guys are already, you know, ahead of the curve on that. Um, you know, obviously you're sitting in that strategy seat now. And as you shared, loving all of the, um, you talking to the marketers and their business, you, what are you seeing? What are some of the biggest trends that are, are happening right now? There's so many and we, we probably track over 15 trends when it comes to kind of designing strategies for customers or uh, kind of uh, developing our own roadmaps. But I think there's, there's three primary things that are really probably not necessarily trends, but they're like they're fundamentally changing the way marketing and specifically digital marketing will work in the future. And one of those things is that, that now there is more than ever digitally savvy consumers, right? So the e-commerce e market has grown far faster than ever before, obviously because of you know, COVID impact and, and how consumers had to adopt some of these channels. And let me, let me just pause and dig deeper in this because I think many people say, well, consumers have become digitally savvy. Consumers have become digitally savvy since 1980s, right? That, that, that hasn't changed. But if you really think about what it means, you know, I, I have a, such a good example where recently you know, I, I moved to a new place. And I was uh, filling in kind of application form for local doctors here. And, and I had to unstaple some, some, some papers, right? And I, and I was unstapling them. And I, and, I, and, I, and I realized I made a mistake because I need to staple them back, right? So my first reaction was, oh, I can just undo it, right? I, I can undo it. I, it, it only because I'm so used to dealing with like PowerPoint and Excel and whatever it might be. Like that, that's my first reaction as a human being. And I'm sure every single person, you know, kind of uh, interacting across digital media, interacting with brands, you know, our minds have changed fundamentally, you know, especially during COVID times in the way we interact with brands. And this is really pushing kind of a brands to, to compete against the likes of Amazon, against Deliveroo on the same level. You know, you, you, can't, you, you, you can no longer compete unless you really start to differentiate yourself, right? So that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the first trend. And that has accelerated faster than ever before. The, the second trend is this, 
the, the cookie jar is closing, right? The, you know, from 2022, you know, the first party data will be the primary source for extracting insights about your customers to understand what they're actually doing, which means that, you know, the, the typical roles of CRM marketing teams or kind of anyone dealing with customer data will be in huge demand. But that also means that the expectations from the senior management will significantly increase, right? You know, you, you'll have to provide those insights uh, on tap, right? So if you're not exactly data savvy right now, or you don't have those insights, you'll be in trouble, which takes me in, actually, there's one more example to that. You know, more recently, Apple have announced that they will be uh, in the new release of Apple Mail they will be blocking tracking in emails as well, right? So there's more and more of these technologies creating these kind of like gates for marketers to access data, which means that you really have to start relying on data that you already have and extract as much value as you can of the data. And then kind of a, the third kind of a really major trend, and it's probably a combination of the first two, is the fact that brands will realize that they need greater focus on customer centricity and customer focus and real understanding what, what does it mean to provide a great customer experience. And when they realize that, when they start doing those activities, very quickly brands will, will recognize that actually they may not necessarily have the talent or the abilities to extract those insights on tap because customer experience you know, it may seem like a very such a simple such a simple term, and everyone's using it. You know, everyone's talking about customer experience platforms. But what does experience actually mean? You know, experience is not something that you you know send someone to via WhatsApp or mobile push message. It's something that you feel as a human being, right? If you're really gonna go down to the bottom of it, right? So, and you can't do it without having the data about all the customer behavior across a variety of channels, but also without the ability to, to the kind of uh, activate and leverage those insights across those variety of channels and connect that across variety of the departments that all too often still operate in silos. You know, I'm looking, at, I'm looking after our paid social, you know, I'm looking after email marketing, right? That just cannot happen. If we're talking about customer experience, it's not about improving customer experience in email. It's not about improving customer experience on a site. It's about improving the holistic customer experience. And that, that, that will result in these kind of uh, realizations that talent might be an issue. Interesting, interesting. And, um, and I wanna hit on that piece, the talent piece, because I think when we were prepping for this, you were telling me that you guys did some research with Forrester, right? And, and that was something that you found in the research had, had something to do with, with talent and, and needing for um, potentially better training or, or upskilling of, of talent, correct? Is that right? Yeah, it's one of the things that came out of the research. You know, we, we haven't specifically asked the question about talent, but you know, some of the insights about talent were kind of were, were mind blowing, and I was really surprised. Let, let me just kind of rewind a bit what the research is about, because yeah. uh, often when you engage Forrester, and, and obviously, you know, as a vendor, you know, you know, there's this research that doesn't come cheap, and you know, quite reasonably so. You know, the, the amount of work these guys do in terms of crunching numbers, you know, in terms of preparing the questions and then extracting insights is absolutely phenomenal. But we decided rather than going for the usual topics like, hey, you know, uh, marketing adoption of AI technologies in the future, right? All, all those types of things that everyone typically talks about, we decided how about we go back to the basics? Marketers and advertisers, they spend so much money, they spend millions on improving customer experience, or so they say so, in improving targeting, into improving personalization, improving talent, all those things. And yet somehow still the customer experience is not improving as fast as they would have wanted to. Right. So the questions that we posed to these over 200 senior marketing decision makers in retail, CPG and finance was, what are the things that actually worked and what things haven't worked in terms of improving the customer experience, right? So, so what are the things that we should be focusing on and what are you planning to do in the future, right? So these are the kind of questions that we ask quite open-ended, but nevertheless, very, very important. So we know what to focus on in the future. And the study is called uh, Use Analytics and Insights to Accelerate Your Customer Experience Strategy. And one of the first things that they came out of the study is that 89% of senior marketing decision makers said that the customer experience strategy is either important or extremely important. 
and yeah. which is great, right? It's, it, <laughs> it, does, it doesn't come to surprise. In, in fact, some marketers even said that it's that is that important. The customer experience is so important that they're no longer even looking for ROI justifications for improving the customer experience, which is also a great great thing to hear. However, uh, only about half. The, I think that was fifty uh, forty seven percent of respondents they said that they actually actively revisit their strategy with all the teams uh, once a year or even less frequently, right? So this is extremely important. They don't want to prove the ROI, and yet they only ever look at it once a year, right? Especially during this pandemic, especially as the consumer expectations are changing. This is quite phenomenal. And this shows that brands still have so much way to go in terms of actually kind of understanding how to extract the customer insights and to develop develop those strategies. And number one thing that, that, that kind of a, most marketers believe that they have a challenge in, in terms of developing those strategies, is this lack of customer insights and lack of customer understanding. And this really kind of highlights this, this, uh, so some of these challenges that marketers are saying, where they normally, you know, if you ask a marketer and say, what are your primary concerns? What are your primary challenges? They would rarely say talent or they would rarely say customer insights. They would say things like, you know, we want to improve our personalization. We want to improve our targeting. We want to improve our marketing automation. But the reality is, unless you know who your customers are, right? Unless, unless you have the customer insights, what exactly are you improving? You're, like, you're just improving the automation based on these inefficiencies in understanding who the customers are, right? So, so this is why I believe the number one challenge was actually kind of understanding customer insights. And then when we ask them, why do they think they have this challenge? So why do they have this lack of understanding of customer insights? More than half of senior market decision makers said, that lack of skilled talent is holding them back from delivering better customer, customer experience strategy. And this is mind blowing, right? So it, they, you know, th these, are the, these are the brands that are spending a lot of money on kind of on technologies, on hiring the, 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 these people, and yet talent is not providing the results that they, they actually wanted to. And, but, but, you know, anyone listen to this, I, I want to reassure you because, you know, some of you might be thinking, geez, I'm, I better start writing my resume, right? You know, my boss doesn't believe in me, doesn't think I have the right skill set. Maybe he's right. You know, I, I don't know how to program in R. That is not the answer. Because then when we ask them, well, what are the things that have delivered the least success in last two years when it comes to improving kind of a customer experience and improving talent? was number one thing that has delivered the least success, followed by improving content, followed by replacing their agencies, right? So on one hand, you have marketers saying that we have a talent problem. On the other hand, marketers that have went down this path, they're saying talent is actually not fixing the problem, right? So this is the, this is the kind of the most interesting fact that they came out of it. And the way we at MAP and Forrester interpreted is that uh, you know, it doesn't matter kind of how talented is your talent, unless they have the right technology to extract the insights kind of on tap, and more importantly, make those insights available to the team members that are actually creating those experiences. You know, you, you're not going to see the significant improvement in customer experience. You know, and that that is the answer. And, I'm sorry, okay, let me ask a question there. Um, it, so one of the things is you were talking about that that I was thinking about too. I had a conversation with uh, a brand recently that was talking about, uh, we we're talking about the, the concept of having a customer golden record and, and this particular person was in the loyalty space. And she was all excited because she actually has an insights team that is part of loyalty. And in, in her previous lives at different organizations, uh, the, the insights or the analytics team sat somewhere else in a different area do you think that is potentially a fundamental challenge too, that the insights group may be being led by a different team in a different quote unquote silo from maybe the business team that's using the actual data and insights. So maybe there's a disconnect there as well. Oh, for sure. I think that's probably the reason why we ended up there, but, but I think that was also a natural progression, right? So when a brand wants to become insight led, you probably have to start there because you have to kind of uh, build up the internal kind of a uh, brain muscle 
in terms of understanding, okay, what data actually has value? You know, how do we get this data in there? How do we clean the data? How do we make this data available? Because that's what the kind of uh, data scientists and data insights teams can really help with. But then the next step is, okay, how do you operationalize the insight? Because I think this is where most brands really struggle with, right? You have this insight, but then there's so many steps removed until that insight reaches the individuals that are actually creating those experiences. And I think this is this, why this step is very important is that uh, the, the, next, the lo next logical step for those brands would be is to make those, not necessarily kind of a bring an insights team into the uh, kind of a marketing team, but it's actually enabling every single person in marketing uh, with those insights, not with data, not with analytics, but actually the actual insight you know, things like, hey, this campaign is, is underperforming because you've just launched this other side campaign that's actually detracting your customers, right? These are the real insights that a person that runs paid media or runs email marketing campaigns, they can actually act upon. And, and I think that's the, that's the logical next step. Well, and insights is different or insights are different than looking at data on a dashboard. Exactly. Exactly. And you need somebody that can go in and and you know, dig behind that that dashboard or double click in there deeper and understand more of the the hows and the whys of of those surface numbers. Exactly. And yeah. that tends to be, I think, where we're maybe we're falling short too. So we're always looking for the you know next um, uh, opportunity with you know, is my campaign working or not. But we're not when we're not asking those extra questions. Well, yeah. we're not asking us the questions, but but also sometimes because those in, that data to provide insights is locked in with some teams. In fact, I, I spoke to to one of the major retailers in Germany, and and th their answer to analytics was that we we actively do not give our campaign managers uh, access to GA because that just confuses them, right? They don't know what to do with that. You know, they spend too much time looking at them. So instead we have the insights team providing insights to, to, to the campaign team and then they implement. But the challenge with that is the insights team doesn't necessarily always know the, the, the decisions that the marketing team or the, or the campaign team makes, right? Because every single thing, you know, every single kind of a subject line, piece of creative, you know, the segmentation logic, all those things are these small decisions that the campaign team still has to make. And, and, and sometimes there might be some improvements to the campaign itself, uh, kind of a higher up the funnel. So it might, it, might be, it might be kind of improvements based on accuracy of data capture, which directly impacts their role. But unless they can see that because that's covered from them, they, they will not be improving it, right? They'll, they'll just be trying to improve this one thing that they have but actually, if they improve this one thing, you know, in a different team, uh, just marginally, that will make a major improvement to their, uh, to, 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 to their campaign effort. Yeah, that, I love that point, too. I, I, I talk about this a lot, is it, to do things better, you don't have to do a lot. You can take baby steps on your way there. You can find a couple little nuggets in the insights, action on those, and you're already going to begin to improve versus trying to um, boil the ocean and, and do it all at once, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, so could, I, I, mean, I, I love the conversation and, and I, I'm convinced, yes, we need data, we need the insights. Uh, plug for loyalty is that your loyalty brings that first party data into, into that mix and, and can help organizations get to those insights a lot faster. Uh, but how about some examples of what this means in real life? So you, people can listen to what we're talking about now. Their head go, yeah, hey, I get it. I want to be insights led, but how is it actually going to help me? So what are some of those actions that people are taking where they're having some of these aha moments and being able to make the switch? Yeah, I I, I love this question. As I was saying earlier, I really like you know taking things apart, and I, and I think all, all too often you know in, in kind of a in marketing of technology vendors or agencies, you know, we, we speak so much about these high level terms like customer experience and insights without really going into detail. So I, 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 I really appreciate this question. Um, I, I, I like to look at it through the lens of a kind of an e-commerce funnel because I think that's probably the um, easiest to understand. And, and to be fair, most brands are moving towards the e-commerce funnel, whether it's travel, whether it's uh, finance, 
you know, it, it, it's always there. And if you think about this e-commerce funnel, it kind of starts with, uh, let's say, brand discovery, then maybe a visit of the, of the homepage, followed by the product page, followed by add to cart, followed by conversion, and perhaps some sort of re-engagement. And as I was saying earlier, there's, there's, so many, there's so many opportunities to improve the funnel, but at the same time, there's also so many opportunities to get things terribly wrong, right? Because, because in most cases, uh, majority of decisions are being done based on gut feel, you know, or maybe experience, but you know, these opportunities are being missed very often. And what we like to say at MAP is that, you know, marketing on averages, it often results in average performance, and this is because often when we make those good decisions, we look at things like average add to cart rate or average kind of abandoned cart rate or average time to re-engage. And typically we do things like, or marketers do things like, they do an A-B test to say, okay, if someone abandoned the basket, uh, let's try sending them a message, maybe four hours and maybe 12 hours after they abandon. Now let's try uh, free delivery versus 10% off and see which one performs better. And then perhaps after a couple of weeks, you, you get a good result. So you, you say, okay, my, my variant A seems to work better. This is, therefore, this is what we're gonna do, right? So I just made a decision based on average. But in reality, uh, depends on what type of products you're selling. Some customers will be abandoning a basket with $5. Other customers will be abandoning baskets with $5,000. And also these customers have a different value to you as a brand. So some customers might be, new or other customers might be high loyal customers that shop on a regular basis, right? So, so all those things really, really matter when it comes to making a decision, because if you make the decision based on average, that means that either you're going to be rewarding that customer with a coupon way too early because they're not ready to make the buying decision yet because it's $5,000. I want to, I want to talk to my spouse, you know, my, maybe, maybe my parent, whatever it might be, you know, I'm, I'm, I might spend a week deliberating, right? Uh, so, so this is why you kind of those, those opportunities get missed, and we believe that it's so critical that during each of those decisions, during each of those phases, the, the, the people that are responsible for making those decisions of when to send that message, of, of what incentive to show, uh, they should have those insights available to them, so they can make a decision that actually for this type of customer, uh, because of the basket value, we're going to be sending this incentive via mobile push maybe in three days time, because that's going to give us a better result, not only better conversion, but also better margin, because we might not have to incentivize that conversion because they're going to convert anyway. Right. And that's just one of many kind of, uh, kind of examples. I, I love, I, I'm sorry. I love, I love your point on, on the average piece. Um, and especially the way you're talking about if somebody's going to make a purchase, somebody's going to make it more frequently, someone's going to take longer. And how do you know that in an average, you can't, um, once you get the insights, once you understand and know that I'm a, um, let's say we're a sporting, sporting goods company and I have a kid that did sports every season. So my big purchases were quarterly or seasonally and, and I'd get offers to come back or my loyalty was the next to come back in the next you know, two weeks or three weeks. And it's like, ugh, so irrelevant because I just purchased everything I could, have, I could possibly purchase. Um, but, but it's significantly different. And, and maybe you're somebody that would purchase more frequently. And so being able to, once you identify the differences between you and I, there's automation technology now where you can automatically set that up. So this isn't always a heavy lift every time, right? Yeah. Exactly. And, and insights, it doesn't have to be a manual, you know, insights is not just about operationalizing the manual workload. It's also about kind of uh, identifying those, those key triggers. And it could be kind of an automatic insight to, to say, hey, you know, here's an anomaly occurring in your database, right? These people are acting way different than what they did last week, right? That's a very valuable insight that you can act upon immediately, but it can also be an insight that kind of uh, changes the, the rules automatically. So some of the examples that we, that we frequently do with customers are things like uh, uh, or extent, or extent intent overlay, right? So such a common tactic in retail e-commerce, you know, you go to a website for the first time, uh, just about, ju just when you're about to leave, it says, hey, please stay, here's a 10% off coupon, right? Th there's so much opportunity in that tactic alone 
by being able to leverage some of the kind of a behavior of previous customers. So for example, you can do things like score the likelihood to convert and also score the likelihood to spend in that session. So if I know you had no intent of converting, right? And you, you haven't clicked enough. So maybe giving you an incentive right now is not the best thing to do. However, if I know that you are about to spend $100 in this session and you're about to leave, now that's gonna change the way I'm going to kind of present that tactic to you, right? So rather than saying, hey, 10% off, maybe I'll say, actually, if you spend $150 in this session, I'm gonna give you $25 off you know, this purchase. So you can, you can really not only kind of capture the customer in the moment, make it more relevant, uh, but also kind of increase the, uh, incre increase the value and increase the, the basket size for that customer. Because if that customer was about to spend $5,000 and they spend five minutes on the website and they're about to leave, you know, that maybe $10 voucher could be an insult, right? So, so, so you really have to, and this is where the kind of the uh, connection to the customer experience comes into play, where it's also important to look at what's happening right now in, 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 in a session and what is the most appropriate thing for this customer right now. Great. Great. And you guys um, have, at, at MAP, have a, a process to really help customers with this, right? You, you call it your blueprint? Uh, yes, so so I'll, I'll talk about the blueprint in a second, but actually when it comes to this kind of this challenge around uh, bringing the insights closer to the to the marketing team, uh, we have developed what we call kind of a e-commerce and retail uh, accelerators. Mm -hmm. So typically the way kind of analytics used to work is that you know you approach a vendor and then there is a free or six month exercise trying to understand, what insights do actually matter to you? What would you want to extract? But then we actually learned that most brands kind of end up in a similar place, you know, when it comes to what kind of insights you want to get out of the e-commerce. So instead we developed these kind of a e-commerce accelerator that comes with uh, over 30 different dashboards that have uh, anything from high level kind of a senior manager insights into how well you're performing in marketing so in terms of driving traffic, uh, conversions, re-engaging customers, but then for kind of uh, for the campaign managers, you can drill down all the way through to the channel level and the campaign level, as well as slice data uh, across a variety of different customer segments. Great. And when we talk about yeah, and when we talk about the customer segments, it's it's not just the demographic segments or transaction segments. We also look at kind of a uh, individual customer stages. Uh, within a funnel, right? So are they just, have they just browsed once or are they browsing on a regular basis? Are they kind of a frequent shopper? So all those types of things. And then we overlay that with some additional AI-based segmentation, right? So how much do we predict that you like to spend the next 30 days or the next 60 days? Uh, and more, more importantly, this data is not just kind of a curiosity that you can analyze and you know extract some insights, you can actually act upon that. So you can you can connect this to your execution channels, whether it's email, mobile, push, paid media activation, right? So the same insights that are available now for your data insights team that are able to slice and dice data is available to senior marketing managers, perhaps even your agencies. So you're aligned on the same set of KPIs because agency is a funny example. You know, we work with uh, a number of kind of retailers where we every couple of weeks we we meet up and we discuss the objectives for the for the next quarter for the next month and every single agency comes in with their own different dashboards and kpis you know the social media agency will bring facebook dashboards uh the the paid search team will bring some google dashboards you know the e-commerce the e commerce team will have their own insights and everyone's kind of a trying to optimize the conversion. So every single channel is talking about how they're gonna increase the conversions for the next quarter. And going back to the customer experience conversation, we know that if every single team, every single agency just talks about conversions, that is not a great customer experience, right? Customer experience comes from combination of all these channels. And only when you have kind of a single dashboard for everyone to understand what role does this channel actually play in terms of delivering the customer experience, only then you can start discussing how you improve 
uh, and, 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 op and, op and optimize that. Love it. Love it. That's great. Terrific. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for everything you've shared today. i uh, wondering if you have any other closing advice to the marketers who are listening. Any, any wisdom to part with? <laughs> Sure, absolutely. That's so many. Well, if you guys are on the path of becoming kind of inside led or would like to start developing your, you know, if you're one of those brands that only kind of improve your customer experience strategy, you know, once a year, uh, I do encourage you to, to download this white paper or this study that we've done with Forrester that has some really good insights. Uh, and I guess we're going to share a link later. Uh, but also what we've done is we've we built this uh, kind of a marketing community that is totally free to use. It's called improveyour.marketing, right? So that's HTTPS semicolon slash slash improveyour.marketing. Uh, and there you can actually uh, shortlist your tactics and priorities that you want to focus on for the next 12 months, whether it's in, in acquiring customers, nurturing customers, or growing customers. And then from those tactics, you can build your strategy blueprint that you can then use to discuss with your teams or agencies around the, your priorities and the things that you want to yeah, you want to improve. So yeah, highly encourage you to try that. Great, great. We will make sure to add that into uh, the video too. So when people are watching, they'll have that. Thank Terrific. You. Thank you so much for uh, the conversation today. I learned a ton. I love it. Thanks, sir. It's the same here. And I, I look forward to doing this again. Thanks for having me. Thank you.